Hello and welcome to another video. This time we're going to have a bit of fun creating a painterly image. Now we've got a lot to get through, so let's crack on. We're going to head over to the layers panel. I'm going to duplicate the background layer and I'm going to use Command J or Control J. The next thing we need to do is switch off the visibility of layer one. We're going to click on the background layer because this is going to form the background for our image and we're going to fill this with white. So heading over to the toolbox, make sure you've got the default colors. Any other colors, press D on the keyboard. We'll restore those default colors. Now to fill the image with the background color, which is white, we can use a very simple shortcut. Press and hold down Command or Control. So hold down Command or Control. On a PC, press Backspace. On a Mac, press Delete. We have now filled our background layer with solid white. Zoom in out, I'm going to use spacebar, now Alt or Option, into this region here. So we're going to extend the canvas, heading up to Image, Resize, Canvas Size. I like to put a tick in the box for relative, it just makes life so much simpler. Now I'm using inches, but you can easily be using centimeters, millimeters, whichever one you're comfortable with. Now for inches, I'm going to add one inch to the width, and I'm going to add one inch to the height. Make sure you've got that spot right in the center. Canvas extension color, click and from the drop down menu, select white, click on OK, and there it is, that's now extended it by one inch. Using Command Zero, Control Zero, we can go to fit on screen. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some texture. So heading up to Filter, Texture, Texturizer, and when the Filter Gallery opens, right click, go to 100%, that way you can see exactly how it's going to look. Now the scaling, I'm going to drop this back, I've got a, it's the default, it's about 100%, something like that. The relief is about 4, I think. And with canvas, you tend to get this repeat pattern. That's where taking the scaling right the way up can help. I'm also going to take the relief down to two. I just want a very faint pattern behind it. That'll do nicely. So let's click on OK. Now that's just a little bit too stark or white. So we're going to add some color to it. We're going to head up to an adjustment layer. We're going to come down to solid color. Now, I don't think black is going to work, so let's lift this up. I'm going to take it. I want a little bit of a there, that sort of oh, spot on. That will do nicely. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead, and I'm going to click on OK. So we can see the texture underneath our color. We're going to change the blend mode from normal, and I'm going to select multiply. There it is. You can, of course, reduce down the opacity if you want to blend it in and just make it a little bit lighter. But I'm going to leave this at 100%. Clicking on layer one, let's switch on the visibility. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to bring a little bit more detail out of this area here. So heading up to enhance, coming down to adjust lighting, shadow and highlights, and the default amount of 35% of light and shadows yeah, that really works a treat. I'm going to click OK to that. We're now going to apply a filter to it. Filter, Artistic, and I'm going to come down to Poster Edges. This opens up the Filter Gallery. I have got the edge thickness of 4. I've got the edge intensity of 0, and I'm using Posterization of 2. Clicking on OK. Right, next, just a little bit too much detail with this. So we're going to go to Filter, we're going to come to Blur, we're going to go across to Gaussian Blur, and with Gaussian Blur, if I just click on a hat, clicking down, you can see there's all those spots, release it, softens it off nicely, I'm using a radius of 1.6 pixels, just having a look at the face as well, clicking down, you can see the hair releasing it, yes, that looks good, click OK to that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask. But before you rush off and click on the layer mask icon, press and hold down Alt or Option. Why are you holding down Alt or Option? Well, if you click straight on the layer mask, it would put in that standard white mask, the reveal all mask. We want to use the hide all mask, the black mask, holding down Alt or Option. Now clicking on the layer mask, in goes that black mask. White is now the foreground colors. 
If yours is the opposite way around, simply press X on the keyboard or click on that little double arrow. Picking up the brush tool. I'm going to right click. We've got default brushes. I've got 35 pixel brush. We're going to change it. Click in, drop down menu, wet media brush, scrolling through my favorite coming down to this one. Here is the large texture stroke. It's 54 pixels. Clicking on it. There it is. If that's large, I would hate to see the small one. Press enter or return to remove that panel. Let's come down to tool options. There is our brush size as we have seen. It is 54 pixels, the opacity 100%. We're going to leave that as it is, but the size, we're going to take it up. Now you can use the slider. I prefer to see the brush. So bringing it out, I'm now going to use the right hand square bracket. There's the size. We're now going up to 100 pixels. Let's go to 175. A few other changes to make. Brush settings. Scatter, 3%. Let's move this across. I'm going to go up to 30% for the scatter. Spacing, 1%. Let's move this across. I'm going to take it, backing it up. I'm going to go for 10%. So just taking it to this region here. Next, roundness. Okay, let's change this as well. We're going to squish it down. And you can see from the preview here, as I'm beginning to move it down into this area, we're going to go for roughly about 50%. Okay, exactly 50%. And there it is, looking pretty squished. Pressing enter or return to remove it. Now, the reason I like this brush so much is every time you click down, look at the way it changes its direction. Right, white foreground color, black mask, should have the hat and face roughly around this area here. And you can see that painterly effect looking pretty good like this. Very much like a paint door, but as I'm coming around this area here, and when we reach this stage, things can really sort of quicken up. But as I'm looking at it, I'm not so sure I like the tones. Let's just drop this down out of the way as well. So something we can do is head up to the blend modes. I'm going to change it. Worth experimenting with all of these. Hard lights, linear lights works particularly well. Let's have a look at hard lights like that that really does work well zooming closer i'm going to use spacebar now i'm going to use command or control and we're just going to click into this area we're in 100 percent let's go in even closer let's go for 200 percent and as i'm clicking down you can see the brush change in shape i'm clicking down quite often just to get those sizes and because we squished it down the brush is now more of an oval shape or should i say the individual bristles to use the technical term I suppose just down around here so you can see the way we can build it up just going over it working with that filter we've applied underneath of that poster edges around we go here I'm going to zoom out let's go command one control one going to 100% and as I come down around this part you should see a hand somewhere oh there's the end of the brush it's a bit of a clue over to the hand down around the wrist like that another peculiarity with this particular brush is if i press x on the keyboard or click on the double arrow what happens now is you should be able to paint out the areas you've done not with this brush it just makes it a bit fainter and that's because we've made a few changes to it you can see that coming through really faintly there i could just fade that that blue area here just take it fading it down there as well Let's move it up further. And I just like the way this works. So clicking back on the white, let's bring the red in here like that over on this area. I think she was actually painting on a wall. So let's bring back a bit of the wall just around there, joining it up to where we were. Pressing X on the keyboard. For some reason, my X doesn't like to work. So over here, and just over this region as we can see just bringing back little bits of white i just like the way we can use this works well with that background color and just come in over here you can even go over there just to bring that back it's a little bit faint pressing x no still refusing to work clicking on that double arrow and there we can just bring that's better looking pretty good like this over the edge of the hat 
If you ever want to see what's underneath, all you need to do, when I mean underneath, what's under here, that's what I meant to say, press and hold down shift on the keyboard. So hold down shift, now click on the mask. There it is, you can bring it back. So you just remove the mask. You can see the effect that we've got there and you can see the way the brush is working with it. it looks pretty good like this. So just round this hat like that. You can bring back as much as you want. You can bring back as little as you want. You can leave little speckles like this entirely up to the edge of the hat. That's what I was looking for. That's what I have found coming down around the area of her hair. And you can see the way it's and also notice the way the brush is one size, but you can see as I go around it, the way it's shooting out. That is because we changed the scatter. That's because we changed the spacing. So all of those settings are working together. Right, pressing X on the keyboard, still refusing to work. Just gonna click on that double arrow. I'm gonna bring back this area, but I'm gonna bring it back quite faintly, something like that there. That could work nicely. Right, pressing, double clicking on that, or clicking on that arrow, right. And just coming over here, and there we are. That will do for the moment. Something else, I just want to bring through a little bit more definition. So we're gonna head up for a finishing touch. We're gonna to use an adjustment layer of levels. Now notice the histogram. We are looking at the entire layer stack here. I'm gonna come down to this and like on this square with that angled arrow. When I click on this, we have now clipped it. The histogram changed. We are now working purely on our image layer. I'm gonna to come to this slider, moving it to the right. You can just add a little bit more contrast, moving it to the left, you can make it a little bit lighter. Entirely up to you, I'm just gonna take it down a touch or two, just very, very slightly, just to give a, there, just a little bit more bite, switching the visibility off and on. You can see just a very small amount, but just adds nicely to that contrast. Clicking on the cross to close it down, clicking back on the mask, making sure that blue line is around the mask area. Otherwise you'd be painted on the image itself. Just taking a look around. I think that will do for now, just a bit more around the wrist. Just click in just to change the shape and go over that will do nicely. Command zero, control zero to go to fit on screen. There is our finished image, our painterly effect. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come and click that little bell icon. That way you'll receive notifications every time a new video has been posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.